Hello students, welcome to Dalasa Online. My name is Josia Mokhtarima. I'm a chemistry teacher and for today I'm here to proceed with our discussion on the topic known as selected compounds of metal and the subtopic known as chlorides. So our topic is selected compounds of metal And the, our subtopic is chlorides. And this topic is a continuation of your O-level topic which you studied, which is known as metal and its compounds. So, for proceeding now, let us see now what are we going to consider in this subtopic. And the main issue that we consider in this subtopic is how can you prepare the metal chlorides and also we'll discuss on the chemical properties of metal chlorides and we'll also discuss on the peculiar characteristics of the chlorides of iron and the aluminium and also the methods of preparation. And after that discussion now we'll look on some questions and see how can we solve those questions concerning this subtopic. So if we now recall to our, 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 our introduction that the metal chlorides when we talk of metal chlorides we talk of the when a metal have combined with the chlorides or chlorides ion with chlorides ion or chloride atom. So the resulting compound here is what we call it metal chlorides. So since we are talking about the chloride ions or chloride atom, here is where now we can find the two methods of preparation of metal chlorides. So the methods of preparation of metal chlorides can be obtained from these two different forms of our chloride ions that combine with the metal. And here is that the, when metal combine direct with the chlorine atom or chlorine molecule, the resulting compound is the metal chloride. But that method is the direct method of preparation. But if a metal combined with chloride ions, which means that the chloride ions can be obtained from any compounds, then the resulting product will be the metal chloride. But that method is known as indirect methods of preparation. So preparations we have two methods. We have the direct method and the indirect methods. So we have the direct methods and the indirect methods. So if we start discussing about the direct method, direct methods involves Heating a metal directly into chlorine gas is what we call it direct method. So you combine it directly the metal and the chlorine. So here is involves heating the metal directly in chlorine gas. Let us take an example of iron. Iron which is solid when heated directly in chlorine gas 
when heated directly in chlorine gas then the product is iron to chloride and the, when balanced the equation is balanced but if chlorine gas is in excess the resulting product is the reddish brown color product which is iron 3 chloride so when now this iron 2 chloride is further heated in chlorine gas the product is iron 3 chloride which is now the reddish brown color product so this is what we call it direct method of preparation of chloride of metal now when balancing here we have three three here you can put three then you have six chlorine no two chlorine two chlorine four there we have three chlorine and you have here we can put three then here it will be uh, it's your task you can balance it yourself you as a student so you don't need to complicate it so it's your task to balance that equation now other metal chlorides like aluminium and copper can also be prepared by the same method so other other metal chlorides such as of aluminium such as of aluminium and the zinc can also be prepared can also be prepared in the same way when you say in the same way that means heating the this metal directly in chlorine gas so let us take consider for the case of aluminium if this is aluminium now our metal when it directly heated in chlorine gas then the product is aluminium chloride so you can balance it it's your task to balance but you also if it's zinc you can heat it directly in chlorine gas and the product is also zinc chloride so these are what we call it direct method of preparation of metal chlorides so let us now consider the second method of preparing the chlorides which is now the indirect method so we have the indirect indirect method indirect methods here can be categorized into three categories one is what we call it precipitation precipitation method and the second is the reaction reaction of alkalis with the dilute hydrochloric acid and the third is the reaction of metal oxide with dilute hydrochloric acid so the third is the reaction of metal oxides with the dilute hydrochloric acid normally the precipitation method is specifically method of preparation for insoluble chlorides taking an example here if you have 
precipitation method if you have silver nitrate then this one if treated with a solution of dilute hydrochloric acid the product here obtained will be silver chloride which is solid and the other product will be the nitric acid and it balances your task to do it so this is what we call it precipitation method since what we have obtained is silver chloride which is our ppt or precipitate likewise if you have lead nitrate lead nitrate when also treated with the dilute this is aquas when treated with dilute hydrochloric acid then you'll end up getting the lead chloride which is solid then plus nitric acid which is an aquas so you can balance the equation now this is now our precipitate form d so this is what we call it precipitation method and we also have mentioned that the reaction of alkalis with dilute hydrochloric acid reaction of alkalis with dilute hydrochloric acid take me an example of a very common alkali which is sodium chloride sodium hydroxide when sodium hydroxide is treated with dilute hydrochloric acid then you get our soluble chlorides which is sodium chloride then plus plus water and it is a kind of neutralization reaction so this is now our alkali reacting with the hydrochloric acid the product is sodium chloride which is now our our chloride that we are talking about but the third method you have talked about the reaction of metal oxide with the dilute hydrochloric acid here taking an example so the reaction of metal oxide with the dilute hydrochloric acid so if we take an example of calcium oxide as our metal oxide this calcium oxide when treated with dilute hydrochloric acid our product here will be calcium chloride plus water so that is our product now this calcium chloride is our soluble chloride that have been formed so it is an example so these are the two methods that can be used to prepare metal chlorides we have mentioned that we have the direct method and the indirect method so let us now move to another part which is about the chemical properties of metal chlorides so the chemical properties of metal chlorides and here on the chemical properties of metal chlorides we discuss on two main chemical properties which is very very important for you to understand one we will discuss about the reaction with water reaction of metal chlorides with water and second we will discuss the chemical properties which about the action of heat action of heat on the metal chlorides okay my dear students i think you are following now let us consider about the reaction of metal chlorides with water
Here normally the reaction of the metal chlorides of sodium and the magnesium with the water does not take place. What happens is that the metal chloride dissociates into their respective ions. So no reaction between water and the metal chlorides of sodium and magnesium. So what is happening here is that sodium chloride when reacted with water they just form their aqueous solution. which means that they dissociate into their respective ions. So likewise, if it is magnesium chloride, also in water, dissociate into their respective ions. So it exists in aqueous state, which is now magnesium chloride aqueous. So writing aqueous, that means they are ions. You can balance the equation. It's now your task, my dear students. So that is about the sodium chloride and the magnesium chloride. The other metal chlorides reacts with the water by the process known as hydrolysis. So the other, other metal chlorides, other metal chlorides reacts with water, reacts with water, and this process is known as hydro, hydrolysis. So let us take an example of our most common chloride, which is iron three chloride. So taking an example of one is iron three chloride. When reacted with water, they result into formation of. So let us take an example of iron. Take an example of one, which is aluminium chloride. When reacted with water, they result into formation of hexa aqua aluminium three ions, then plus three chloride ions. So this is an aqueous and that one is an aqueous. So that is what happening. So Aluminium chloride get hydrolyzed into formation of hexa aqua aluminium three ions, which is our complex ion. Now, if ba by balancing there here must be must be sixty. Now, the iron three chloride proceed to react with water. The reaction now proceeds proceeds whereby the aluminium hexa aqua aluminium 3 proceeds to react with the water resulting into formation of acidic solution which is now you'll have the aluminium hydroxo hexa Hydroxo penta aqua aluminium then will be plus hydroxonium ion. So the hydroxonium ions that is which is released now indicates the acidic solution of aluminium chloride. So that's why you say that aluminium chloride in aqua solution it is an acidic solution. So that is what is happening to aluminium chloride. Likewise, to iron three chloride also results into formation of acidic solution due to formation of hydroxonium ions. So you can balance the equation if you are tasked to do it. Okay, another example is the 
zinc chloride when it reacts with water which is liquid results into formation of zinc hydroxyl chloride which is an aqueous then plus hydrochloric acid which is also an aqueous so it's your task to balance the equation so this is known as zinc hydro hydroxyl chloride so that is what we call it also hydrolysis and if we consider another example this is zinc chloride if we consider another example of copper chloride when copper chloride is reacted with water undergoes hydrolysis resulting into formation of a complex compound which is copper dichloro copper dichloro dihydroxo resulting into formation of a complex compound of dichloro hydroxo cuprate two ions which is now an aqueous it's your task to balance the equation so that is how the metal chloride reacts with the water and that reaction is known as hydro hydrolysis now from there let us see another chemical properties of metal chlorides which is now the action of heat on metal chlorides so we have the action of heat on the metal chlorides normally most metal chlorides are resistant on heat so most metal chlorides are resistant on heating which means that they do not undergo decomposition on heating but some metal chlorides when they are in their hydrated form then they are being heated they undergo what we call it hydrolysis but some metal chlorides in their hydrated in their hydrated form when heated get decomposed by the reaction which is we call it as hydrolysis when heated undergo hydrolysis let's uh, let us take an example of our hydrated metal chloride which is magnesium chloride with six water molecules so it is hexahydrated magnesium chloride taking an example of magnesium chloride with six water molecules when heated magnesium chloride undergoes hydrolysis leading into formation of basic chloride of magnesium which is this one the basic chloride of magnesium then the other product is hcl and the water which escapes as water vapor is your task to balance it 
So that is what is happening. So instead of removing water, it undergoes hydrolysis leading into formation of the basic chloride of magnesium. And further heating, further heating, further heating on this product is that we have now magnesium, basic chloride of magnesium, when further heated, it results into formation of magnesium oxide, which is solid, then plus hydrogen chloride, which is an aquas. It's your task to balance the equation. So do you see now how hydrolysis is taking place on hydrated metal chlorides? And that's why we say that magnesium, hydrated magnesium chloride cannot be prepared. Hydrated magnesium chloride Anhydrous magnesium chloride cannot be prepared by heating directly the hydrated magnesium chloride. Why? Because it undergoes hydrolysis. So instead of forming anhydrous magnesium chloride, it results into formation of magnesium oxide, which is our end product. So no anhydrous magnesium chloride is formed. So that is what is happening in, 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 in metal chloride when heated on their hydrated form. But we have another example, chloride of aluminium. The hydrated chloride of aluminium, when heated, when heated releases the aluminium oxide, then plus the other product is the hydrogen chloride gas and the water, water molecules. So it's your, it's your task to balance those equations. So that is what is happening to the hydrated metal chloride. So likewise to aluminum chloride, iron 3 chloride, zinc chloride, hydrated form of zinc chloride when heated resists. But for zinc chloride, for zinc chloride, which have two water molecules, when heated, releases zinc chloride, then plus C plus water. Which means that you can now prepare the anhydrous zinc chloride by heating the hydrated zinc chloride. Then now you'll have the product of our anhydrous zinc chloride. Because that is, is the same to that of copper chloride. Copper chloride, when heated, also releases copper chloride, then plus, plus water which escapes as a vapor or as a gas. Even here is a gas that escapes into the atmosphere. You can balance the equation. So that is about the action of heat on metal chlorides. So let us now consider the how can you identify that these compounds contain chlorides or are metal chlorides. So we have what we call it the chemical test of chloride ions. So we have what we call it test for test for chloride ions and this is applied in qualitative analysis do you remember qualitative analysis so here we use silver nitrate silver nitrate solution is used to test for the presence of chloride ions in compounds and here let us consider the reaction behind if it is silver nitrate and mixed with a solution containing chloride ions. 
Then the resulting product is the formation of white PPT of silver chloride. So this is, appears as white precipitate. White precipitate of silver chloride are being formed. So this is now the specific reagent which is used in testing the presence of chloride into a substance. Now from there, let us now proceed with another part on which is about the specific, specific characteristic of the chlorides of iron and the chlorides of aluminium. Chlorides of iron and the chlorides of aluminium. So apart from being the members of the metal chlorides, they have specific features which differ from other chlorides of these metals. And the, the first to start discussing is about the, we have mentioned that these are metal chlorides. And here, for the case of iron and the aluminium, they are, they are chlorides. They are chlorides are covalent in nature. We know that when a metal combining with an animetal, the resulting compound is mainly an ionic compound. But here, what is happening, the product which is formed when iron or aluminium react with chlorine, the result into formation of chloride, which is covalent in nature. And what makes it to be covalent? This is observed due to is observed due to their volatility. Volatility nature. And apart from that, they also in their aqua state, they are poor conductor of electricity, poor conductor of electricity electricity in their aqueous state and what makes it to be poor conductor of electricity in the aqua state is that the chlorides of aluminium and the iron exist as the molecules and we know that molecules do not conduct electricity since there is no ions and the ions are the only responsible particles for carrying charges from one point to another point. So since the chlorides of iron and aluminium exist in molecules, so that's why they do not conduct an electric current. And another specific characteristics that are exhibited by the chlorides of iron and aluminium is that when heated, when they are solid state are being heated, they undergo what we call it demalization. So second is that when they are chlorides are heated, undergo what we call it demarization, and they exist as demas in their vapor state. So, for example, if we take aluminium chloride, when heated, undergo what we call it demalization, changes from solid state into vapor state, but in vapor state, exist as demas. So this is what we call it demalization. This is demas. So here, after balancing, here must be must be two. Likewise to iron chloride. 
Lucky was to aluminium chloride. Aluminium chloride, when also heated, undergoes demalization into vapor state. So it is aluminium chloride with that of molecular formula, and this is in gaseous state. So after balancing here must be, must be two. So that is the second specific feature of the chloride C of aluminium and the iron. But the third is that, is that what we have also discussed, that in their aqua state, in their aqua state, they exhibit an acidic condition. So, third is that they react, react with the water to make, to produce an acidic solution. And here we have discussed about how aluminium chloride reacts with water to form an acidic solution. So here let us take an example of iron 3 chloride. This one, when reacted with water, undergoes hydrolysis to form the resulting product, which is our complex product of aluminium of hexa aqua. Aluminium three ions, then plus three chloride ions there. So this is an aqueous. And the further reaction takes place for now aluminium hexa aqua ion three ion proceed to react with the, this is an aqueous to react with the water molecules and resulting into formation of a complex compound of of hexahydroxo of and there are two positive then will be plus the other ions that which is now the hydroxonium ions the other product is hydroxonium ions which is now indicates the 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 acidic property of the chloride of iron iron 3 so you can balance the equation is what ask to to balance it so that is now the third the third peculiar or special feature of iron chloride and aluminium chloride. The, th the fourth now is that they act as catalyst. They act as catalysts in different chemical reaction. And what makes them to be able to act as catalysts? This is due to their smaller size and uh, high polarizing high polar polarizing power and not only that feature but also due to presence of vacant orbital vacant orbital for the case of iron is d2 sp3 this is for iron and the sp3 for aluminium so therefore here now the the metal chlorides now can undergo oxidation or reduction thereby now catalyzing different chemical reaction that they can be used do you remember we call them as Lewis acid? Very specifically, if you remember the knowledge of organic chemists on the reaction of benzene. So that is the four main peculiar features of the chlorides of 
iron and the aluminium. So from now, from there now, we have now finished the, our part that I promised you to discuss. So let us now, after a short break, go and consider some questions that employ you to use the knowledge that we have discussed here and answer those questions and get the correct answer. So see you later. Okay, welcome back to some questions that now employ you to use the knowledge that we have discussed. Now, the first question is that comment on the following observations. Support your answer with a balanced chemical equation whenever necessary. And the first one is that the relative molecular mass of aluminum chloride in the vapor state is twice the expected value. Do you remember discussing the peculiar characteristics of aluminum chloride and iron chloride? We talked about this one. So here it is about aluminum chloride. So for question one now, A is aluminum chloride. We are told that this aluminum chloride in its vapor state has twice the expected molecular value, molecular mass value, which means that if twice, that means it's the demineralization of aluminum chloride, which results into formation of the demer of aluminum chloride, which is now a gaseous state. So here when it heated, this is what we call it demer of aluminum chloride. So that's why now, if now you find the molecular mass of the solid aluminum chloride, and that one which is in vapor state or in gaseous state, the molecular mass of this one is twice than this one. So that is our first part question, where we have been asked to, 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 to support by using chemical equations. So this is our chemical equation that now supports that explanation. So it is because aluminum chloride in its vapor state undergoes demalization. The second part, which is B, that anhydrous magnesium chloride cannot be prepared by heating the hydrated crystals of magnesium chloride. And here, I think you remember when we were discussing about the action of heat on metal chlorides. Here, we talked about, for example, we talked about zinc, the hydrated form of zinc chloride that have two water of crystallization. So when heated, when heated, this is solid, when heated, results into release of zinc chloride, which is now solid, then the other product there is the water vapor. You can balance. So this is now hydrated form of zinc chloride. By heating, you have obtained anhydrous zinc chloride. Here is two. Anhydrous zinc chloride, you can balance it. So we are now asked the same question to what happened to the case of hydrated magnesium chloride. Will it give magnesium anhydrous magnesium chloride? The answer is no. You remember, we said that when magnesium chloride is in its hydrated form and when heated, Instead of releasing anhydrous magnesium chloride, it releases the basic chloride of, of magnesium. So here, by using now a question to support that answer, is that magnesium chloride, which is in a hydrated form, when heated, it releases the basic chloride of magnesium, which is magnesium chloride, this one. And the other, the other product is hydrogen chloride. You can balance the equation if you are tasked to balance. But further heating, you may think of further heating. Further heating, further heating, this is an, a guess. Further heating of basic Chloride of magnesium results into 
formation of magnesium oxide, then plus hydrogen chloride is a gas. So do you see, at the end, the product is magnesium oxide and not anhydrous magnesium chloride. So that is now how you are supposed to answer that kind of question. And the third part is that aluminum chloride does not conduct electricity. Aluminum chloride does not conduct electricity. So what does it mean here? It means that it cannot form ions in either aqua state or in its liquid state. Because the ions are the responsible particles for carrying charge from one point to another point. So since aluminum chloride does not conduct electricity, this is due to covalent nature of aluminum chloride. We have discussed that the aluminum chloride is covalent in nature. So in aqua state, it exists as molecules. So if it exists as molecules, molecules cannot carry charge from one point to another. So that's why aluminum chloride does not conduct electricity. So that is about question number, number one. So let us now go and consider question number two. Question number two is that iron two chloride forms a light green solution when it dissolved in water. Its color changes to reddish brown when exposed to air for some time. Then why the color of the solution changes when exposed to air? Support your answer with a balanced chemical equation. That is simple, my dear students. I know you remember, iron 2 chloride is this one. This is iron 2, iron 2 chloride. Forms a light green solution when dissolved in water, which means that when reacted with water, do you remember hydrolysis? This now will result into formation of hexa aqua aluminium two ions. Then it will be plus chloride ions, which is an aqueous. So balancing there must be two. So which means that we see supportive balanced chemical equation so you can balance the equation if we balance here must be must be 60 so this is what appear to be light light green solution but uh, later on we are told that its color changes to reddish brown that means from light green from light green to reddish brown but when it is when exposed to air which means that we have an air here when exposed to air and here the reddish brown color is the color of aluminium is the color of iron 3 so which means that here it is an oxidation reaction whereby iron 2 is being oxidized to iron, iron 3 ions. So that is the oxidation reaction which is taking place. So in air, iron 2 is being oxidized into iron 3. That is an oxidation reaction. So you can write the complete reaction. It's your task also to do that. So that is about question two, what it was supposed light green, then this is our reddish, reddish brown solution, which is that of iron 3, iron 3 chloride. Now from there, it's now your task to do the following questions as an assignment, my dear students. I'm sure you can do it very simple because we have discussed the knowledge. So let us now go to the, your assignment, which is now this one. It's question number three, but it's the first assignment to you. The question is that, how can you identify the presence of chlorides 
in a solution. Support your answer with a balanced chemical equation. That is the first assignment question. How can you identify presence of chlorides in a solution? Support your answer with a balanced chemical equation. And the, 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 another, another assignment, another assignment question, which now will be question number two, is that under certain conditions, iron reacts with chlorine to give anhydrous iron 3 chloride. Then why? Excess chlorine, excess chlorine used, you have to give an explanation. B, moisture should not be allowed into the apparatus during the reaction. Why moisture should not be allowed into the apparatus during the reaction? And C, is that why iron 2 chloride is not formed? So that is another assignment question that you need to do it and after doing it you can contact it through my number or whatsapp number which is 0713140914 for consultation for confirmation of the answer that you have obtained thank you very much i'm sure you have enjoyed the lesson and this is the end of our our lesson today so see you next period.